Hey all, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to talk about 200 amp services and how we install them, so stick around. Gotta wire a new residential construction. Okay, so on this property we are installing a 200 amp service. Um, it's being upgraded from the old one that was there, which is 60 amp, and we're gonna go right up to 200. So our minimum height on this service is actually 15 feet or 14 foot six to the point of attachment on the top. As you can see, we've used a rigid steel uh, mast, which is a 12 foot mast. So that 12 foot mast, it goes on top of that meter base. Um, the mast actually has to, there's a code rule on that, stick through the top of that roof exactly one between, sorry, between 900 and 1.1 meters. So basically between three and four feet. Anything over that, or anything over four feet, we need to put a tie back on it to offset the dry plex coming from the utility pole. However, in this situation, it worked out well. Uh, we've gone up through the roof and we've got our, our uh, rack on there and we don't need to have a tie back. So the size of that is actually two and a half inch. Um, we're required to have three mast straps, which you can see there, one, two, three, on the bottom side of that, where it goes into the top of the meter. The meter is actually a 200 amp uh, overhead position meter base. And then we come out of there with two inch PVC pipe. We've gone with uh, an offset and then a 90 degree elbow. And then we go into a LB, which comes through the side of the house. Now inside here, that LB actually enters into another LB uh, and then drops over to another LB, actually sorry, an LL in this situation, and then comes over and comes into our panel. Our panel is mounted uh, basically at about five feet um, and then we've put a new piece of uh, plywood here behind the panel to uh, make it look pretty. And then we uh, have our circuitry coming into here with our GFCI protection. And I'll explain that in another video, but basically where there's ungrounded circuits in this older home, we need to have them GFCI protected. Uh, there's two ways to do that. We can do that with uh, a GFCI, uh, faceless GFCI, or we can do that with a GFCI breaker. In this situation, uh, the faceless GFCI is much more cost effective than the actual GFCI breaker. So the internal workings of the panel, uh, we come in from that outside pipe and then our wires connect onto our main bus bar. This wire size, uh, since copper is so expensive, we actually go with aluminum. So this aluminum size for 200 amp is actually, used to be 4 op, but now it's 250 KC mil or MCM, whatever you want to call it. So we have our two hot wires coming in from outside the underside of the meter base, and then we have our neutral conductor coming in as well. This additional green ground wire is number six copper, which goes outside to either a ground, two ground electrodes or a grounding plate. In this situation, we've installed a grounding plate. So we've dug it down the two feet, put the plate in, taken pictures of it for the inspector, um, and then brought it in through. I should mention that this 200 amp uh, ground, anytime we bring into a new service, needs to be brought through the main compartment of the electrical panel. So we can't enter with this this ground uh, from the ground electrode through the side of the panel it has to come in through the main compartment and hook directly on to the neutral in this point of connection. There's a bonding strip here which goes from the neutral bar to the ground bar, or sorry, to the casing, which has to be done on the first point of connection. Um, so anyway, all the individual wires come in through here. Um, these are the branch circuit conductors. They come down from all of the faceless GFIs and then they connect and we'll actually do another video on how to connect a double circuit breaker. But I just wanted you guys to understand the, uh, how the actual service works. So I'll go back outside and I'll show you inside the meter base. So inside of our 200 amp meter base here, you can see that our lines come down from the top, uh, are one hot on one side or one hot on the other side and our neutral in the middle. The neutral connection then goes out the bottom and then it, it goes into the bottom of the pipe and into the house and then our hot out on the bottom and our hot out on the bottom. So this is uh, what we call a single phase 122 40 volt split connection uh, from the utility. 
So this here, actually this, this compound that you see is called antiox, and that has to be used when we use aluminum conductors just to keep them from oxidizing. So just back up here, you can see where it comes out of the bottom of the service, runs along, and then goes into the LB inside of the house where I've already showed you. That service, right there, goes right up through, and goes up to those connections up on the top. Another valid point that I should point out is we are only permitted, once we enter the structure, to go 10 feet to the electrical panel or we need an external uh, or an additional disconnect, service disconnect. So to avoid that, that's why we've run along the outside of the house to get over to where we need to be to go inside to the electrical panel. Now for the service entrance itself, um, the ground plate that we talked about is actually buried right here and we have it through a PVC pipe and then it goes inside and connects onto the main, main uh, neutral bus like we showed. Now we just, we tend to do a, a, a PVC conduit just because it makes it look a little neater. One other thing I wanna quickly point out, I'll zoom in here, uh, maybe this way, no, nope, this way. I'll zoom in here. You can see we have that uh, fitting entrance on the top pointed backwards from the rack. We do that for several reasons. One, because the, where the conductors come out through the end of the fitting entrance, or the fitting head, it's baked like porcelain and it's very brittle. So pointing it in the opposite direction allows us to manipulate the wires into place and it also allows us to leave our six to 900 millimeters for the utility to hook up the drip loop. Pointing it away from the rack gives the utility a better work, uh, I'd say better quality and better workmanship to get that drip loop on there because you need a drip loop. And a drip loop is when the, it rains, it comes down and drips off the wire so it doesn't go into the top of the service rack and come down through the customer's or consumer's electrical service. So there you have it folks. Those are just some helpful hints on how we do a consumer's electrical service, 200 amp. I hope you liked the video. I hope it was helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.